We're just a couple hours away from the start of trading in Asia. How can we expect today's volatility to translate into those markets? CNBC Asia's Martin Sung joins us from Singapore with the first look at the opening bell overseas. Martin. Good afternoon, Melissa and uh, guys. Yeah, you won't be surprised to know that we are bracing for impact again out here in Asia after losses on Wall Street, especially renewed selling in financials. The problem now, and you guys have been talking about it, Credit Suisse, of course, uh, the stock hitting a record low in trading in New York. And it's you're right, it's still a couple hours to go before most markets out here get up and running. Only New Zealand is trading right now, and it is down, as you can see, in futures are handicapping and negative start down in Sydney as well as up in Tokyo. So the question is, how how is the contagion risk from the class of SVB signature Silver Lake been playing out here in Asia? Well, as you probably know, it's been a case of everything everywhere all at once getting hit. No escape. Asian markets have been under pressure, significant pressure as well, not spared. Asian banks, though, you're probably interested to know. Well, that depends where you look. Broadly, yes, they have been under pressure. But banks in Australia, take a look, have held up pretty well. Insulated there, well capitalized, well regulated. It's more of a commodity story driven by China's reopening. China, of course, is Australia's biggest customer for iron ore and also other industrial metals. And what about banks in China itself? Well, they are sort of in their own ecosystem, mostly top-down policy banks fixated on shoring up the batter real Real estate sector there, also lending for infrastructure. And yes, SVB was the go-to foreign bank for Chinese startups. It does have a joint venture with Shanghai Pudong Bank, but minimal exposure to the U.S. parent. If anything, banks like China Merchants Bank and also ICBC uh, see opportunity and also rushing to try and fill in the gap after SVB's collapse. Now, the market and also the banks that have been hardest hit are over in Japan. Double digit percentage losses in some cases. They haven't been hit this hard since the 2011 earthquake and tsunami, the Fukushima disaster, of course. But it's more of a rate story there. Japanese banks are sitting on a ton of U.S. Treasuries, as you probably know, because rates at home have been so low. Right now, they're looking at an estimated $30 billion in unrealized losses on those bonds. And if that sounds familiar, well, it's pretty similar to the situation that SVB found itself in. Back to you guys. Martin, thanks so much. Martin Sung in Singapore for us. Uh, Guy, Dami, you know, as we sort of digest what's happening around the world and how it's reacting, um, sort of thinking about what Steve Eisman just said to us, and that is if there's so much uncertainty, you kind of don't want to play in that, in that realm. Don't be a hero. And, you know, yeah. listen, if you can listen to anybody, it's Steve Eisman, right? And I think one of the things we said last night is you asked if the banks were investable, and the comment was, listen, I think they're extraordinarily tradable, but right now I don't think investable at all because to your earlier point and one that Steve, we don't know what we don't know. To, so to take sort of draw a line in the sand here and put your stake in and put your flag in, I think we're way early on that front. Was it Monday you said you were in Key Corp uh, for a trade? Are you still in that? No, I sold, it, I sold yeah. it the next day. It was supposed to be a one-day thing, sold the next day. I, I actually added to J.P. Morgan today. I think you could trade around this volatility. Just keep everything on a short leash because we don't know what we don't know, but that is trading, and granted, this is a, a, a lot of uh, energy going into the volatility up and down. Yeah, you have a trade in First Republic. Mm -hmm. Now seeing what has transpired, how are you feeling about the trade? Okay, I mean, it's a uh -huh. capital structure yeah. arbitrage. As long as the stock stays between 10 and 80, I think it'll be a good trade. 